The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Well, Pamela, thank you so much. Appreciate your taking the time. All right, so the ads. Here, here's, here's how it reads. In any war between the civilized man and the savage, support the civilized man, support Israel, defeat jihad. Why are you doing this? Well, there have been a series of anti-Israel ads that have been running for years in the New York City subway system and New York City metro transit and across the country as well. I submitted my ads when, when anti-Semitic ads were running in the subway last year, September, and my ads were rejected. And, you know, the First Amendment protects all speech, not just ideas that we like, but ideas that we don't like, because then who would decide what's good and what's forbidden? The government? Uh, violent rioters? So we sued. My organization sued my law firm, American Freedom Law Center. Mm -hmm. We triumphed. And it was a triumph for First Amendment because uh, it wasn't just the fact that my ads had to go up. It was that the judge ruled that their regulations and standards were unconstitutional. So Monday was the day. Next Monday is the day they're scheduled to go up. I'm running them because I can. All right, so you can. But does that mean that you should? Well, why should we allow only one narrative out there? I think we need to talk about this. The fact that there's been such a visceral reaction to these ads, and particularly in the media, it, to me speaks to a much larger problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is this increasing Sharia. The blasphemy laws under the Sharia says you cannot mm -hmm. offend Islam, you cannot criticize Islam. But when you say one narrative, I see your ad, and I see the same narrative that an anti-Israel uh, ad would have. It's a narrative of hate. Really? I have to tell you, I think any war against innocent civilians is savagery. I think the tens of thousands of rockets coming into Israel from Gaza, targeting homes and schools is savagery. I think the murder of the Fogel family was savagery. I think the blowing up of a bus in Bulgaria, Jewish women and children on holiday is savagery. I think Daniel Pearl's beheading is savagery. I think that there is... But why call the whole religion savages? How am I doing that? There's no Islam in the ad or Muslim in the ad. Okay, but the word jihad actually means struggle in, in, in technically in the Quran to improve yourself, to make yourself a better person. It doesn't mean just going out and, and suicide bombing people. Well, I beg to differ. That would, but, that, nothing... that's, but that is what the word means. It means struggle. Actually, in the Quran, there, nothing speaks to a spiritual struggle. It's all holy war. And the jihadists that are committing jihad are citing Quranic chapter and verse as a holy war. And they may be, and I don't think that there's anybody in that religion, right, people who would say, okay, I'm all right with that. The vast majority of Muslims would say that our religion is a religion of peace and tolerance and love, just like Jews would say, or Christians would say. But Christians are not beheading people and slaughtering people in the name of Christ, and Jews are not doing it in the name of Hashem. There is a faction. There is a very significant faction of uh, devout Muslims, jihadists, that believe in this. Now, clearly all Muslims do not sanction jihad and do not sanction what's going on, these violent protests. But I will not abridge my speech. I will not sacrifice my speech so as not to offend savages. And we do need to talk about this, Erin. There have been so close... So let's, let's talk about the word savage, all right? The okay. word savage, uh, dictionary word, yeah. when we refer uncivilized and barbarous. Obviously, in, over history, this has been a word that has been used in very, very racially negative terms about African Americans. It's a word that is, I think, fair to say, people imply to be, feel is very negative and derogatory. So, so why did you choose to call them savages? Because any war on the civilized man the, the, it, or innocent civilians is savagery. And you're accusing me of thought crimes. You're, you're implying, you're twisting the message. There's a misinterpretation here. Any war on innocent civilians is savagery. It is a word, it is a dictionary defined word. I frankly cannot cotton to this twisting of the word that it means something else. I meant what I said, and I stand behind it. There had been over 20... What you said, though, was you're doing this because you have free speech. No. And just because I can come out and say all kinds of things about somebody because I can say it doesn't mean that I say it. That's what I'm saying. But I don't think my message is controversial. There have been close to 20,000 Islamic attacks since 9-11, each one with the imprimatur of a Muslim cleric. We need to be able to discuss this thing. This doesn't mean that all Muslims subscribe to this, but there is a problem. And part of the problem is you can't talk about it. Look what's happening. If, it, if it's not my ad, then it's a Danish cartoon. If it's not a Danish cartoon, it's a Swedish cartoon. And now it's a French cartoon. And if it's not a French cartoon, it's a YouTube clip. And if it's not a YouTube clip, it's what a... What did you think of the movie? The trailer, I, did you see it? I didn't see it. You didn't see it? No. Why would I see it? 
I don't know. I mean, you, you've just someone who in the past has obviously taken on this issue. Obviously, you were, did not support the mosque near Ground Zero. No, because it's a... It's along a, with actually Steve Klein, a man who was a consultant on the innocence of Muslims, along with Nikula. I don't know Nikula. Steve Klein. I don't care. It doesn't matter. This is freedom of expression. This is freedom of speech. It protects all speech. You don't like it? I, that's fine. You don't have to like it. But to try to bridge my speech is imposing the Sharia. You're imposing the blasphemy laws mm -hmm. on a free society. Well, whether I like it or anyone likes it isn't necessarily the point. The point is if your goal is to try to create tolerance and deal with some of the hate and horrible acts that have happened, is your ad the way to do it? Yes, we have to increase awareness on imposing the blasphemy laws in the West. And my way, there's no tolerance on my side. I don't want to kill anybody. I mean, there are things I see that get me very angry, but I'm not going to go out and burn embassies and kill people. I'm not going to do it. What and if someone was hurt because of your ad? I'm not responsible for other people's actions. It doesn't make any sense. It's like a man going in uh, to his bedroom and finding his wife with a, w with a man and he kills him. He was very angry. He was very offended. Oh, he was? Okay, then he could kill him. I am not responsible for anyone's actions. And worse, I think your position is emboldening Islamic terrorism and emboldening extremism because you're sanctioning it. You're sanctioning well, I, the motive. No, I don't, I don't believe that I'm sanctioning it but at all. But you are because you, 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 I'm the problem. You're blaming the victim. I'm not the problem. How you, are you the victim? Because I just, you're killing the messenger. I messenger put, of what? The messenger that we need to increase awareness of these attacks that have been inspired by jihad. I think the world is acutely aware of those oh, attacks. Oh, I don't think so. The media refuses to talk about it. And when I do talk about it, we're marginalized. Hey, we're you must not be a CNN watcher. I, it's been wall to wall for the past week. Um, the perception in the media in terms of jihad clearly is one that's couched in uh, silencing the voices of freedom. I have, you know, look at this ad. There were hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of anti-Israel ads across America. Nobody said boo. How come you didn't have the, the people on the, that, that ran those anti-Israel ads? Not one, but two I in New York. I have to say, I'm not, I am not familiar with those ads, but I want to I ask you something important but you see, you're not from both sides. But you're not familiar with those ads, which tells you that there is a systemic, institutionalized, A, anti-Israel bias in the media, and B, this well, I have to say, I love visiting Israel, and no, I no, love no, visiting I mean, across I, the Middle East. I, I, I think, saying, I mean, I, I would certainly not... I'm not accusing you of anti-Semitism. Yeah. I'm pointing something out to you. Nobody talked about the ads. It wasn't just you, Aaron. Nobody talked about the anti-Israel ads that were up on New York City Metro mm -hmm. and that were up in New York City subways. The one in New York City subway was urging the end of USA to Israel, implying that USA to Israel was an impediment to peace, when in fact USA to Israel is an impediment to the annihilation of Israel. But nobody said anything about those. They well, were vile. that is an interesting political conversation on aid to Israel and what it is and what it accomplishes, and, and a topic for a separate thing. But I want to ask you something about, um, we, we called both the Anti-Defamation League, obviously the highest profile uh, organization that tries to fight for against anti-Semitism. No, they don't. And also the Council of American Islamic Na Relations. Let me just, they are known for that, that they, they, they track hate crimes against Jews. That is something that they do. Here's what they said. We believe, referring to your ads, Pamela, we believe the ads are highly offensive and inflammatory. Pro-Israel does not mean anti-Muslim. It's possible to support Israel without engaging in bigoted anti-Muslim and anti-Arab stereotypes. The basic premise of the ad is illegitimate and continuing to run it is irresponsible. Okay. These are people who make it their cause in life to fight against anti-Semitism. No, the ADL actually makes it their cause in fight to fight fellow Jews. I mean, the ADL was denouncing Joan Rivers last week. Really, no one in the Jewish community that loves Israel takes them seriously. And CARE is a Muslim Brotherhood group. They and that is the organization, right, Council of American Islamic Relations. Care, they right. said these are hate ads and part of a larger problem. Care I was named as an unindicted co-conspirator in the largest terrorist funding trial in our nation's history. They was named as Muslim Brotherhood. They're a Hamas group in America. Hamas is, first, the, the first paragraph of their charter calls for the annihilation of Israel. Well, is CARE ever going to support me and support freedom? Of course not. They're not. To me, they're not a legitimate group. To me, they're a subversive group whose stated goal, according to an internal captured document in the Holy Land trial, was to eliminate and destroy Western civilization from within. So that is a compliment. Seriously. Okay, let, let, me, let me ask you about this issue about, about savages again, because I think that is part of the problem here. At least it, it, when people look at that ad, it, it is a word chosen, will you admit this, to make people recoil and pay attention. No. To, to, poke up, to, to perk up and say, look at this. No, it's an accurate word. The definition of savage works. Because any war on innocent civilians is savagery. Would you call those that beheaded uh, a colleague, Daniel Pearl, savages? 
Would you I would call, call them, them murderers? You wouldn't call them savages? I would. I would call them savages. I would call Nazis that slaughtered millions and millions of, 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 of Jews and gypsies and, and homosexuals, I would call them savages. So I think now it's not arbitrary. I think when you go to a dictionary and you look up what savage means, and that's the definition. Uncivilized and barbarous. That's right. So let me ask you something else. When people see your name, you are a controversial person, um, which I know you don't, you, you say that you're not, but you are. I'm going to say that I think that that is the case. You're, you're allowed. You're allowed. All right. Um, you have, have done other things as well. Obviously, as I, as I mentioned, you have, um, you, you were not, you were against the Ground Zero Mosque. I was against the Ground Zero Mosque. You have questioned the authenticity of uh, President Barack Obama being born in the United States. I know that's not true. That's a, that, that, that is absolutely not true. I ran a digital forensic examination calling into question alterations that were made to the certification of live birth. I don't know what's on the long form. I don't know what's in, on the vault copy. But I did say, and I didn't say it, an actual digital forensic examination specialist said there were alterations made to the original Kolb. All I said was, what's on the original uh, the vault copy that he doesn't want us to know? That was all I said. Now, they change it and they morph it. Listen, I've written hundreds of articles, two books. I update Atlas Shrugs, my blog, every day. You don't have to guess as to my position. There's no ambiguity to my position. You can read me. You it's said the president is a Muslim. I never said that. I never said he was a Muslim. I said, whether he is or he isn't, what would he be doing differently? And uh, but it isn't that. But but the, see that this is these are the rhetorical games that one can play. It's not a rhetorical but saying game. Saying let's look into a digital forensic of an American citizen's birth certificate is is calling into question whether they were born here. Saying whether you are or aren't a Muslim when you've been very passionate about your Christian faith is raising the question of someone whether someone is or isn't a Muslim. I because never, somehow I ne being a Muslim is perceived as being I, negative. You're accusing me of something I never said. Let's discuss what I said. I'm happy to discuss everything that I said. The same thing with Barack Obama. I don't know what's on the vault copy. Every other president has released the vault except him. It makes you question. Now, you're going to say, Pamela, you're not allowed to question. This is America. I can question. And uh, frankly, I s still think it's a question. I do. I think it's a question. And I do think that Obama is Islamophiliac. Yes, that's what I've said. I didn't say he was a Muslim. There's no way to know what's in the man's heart. And frankly, by their fruits, you shall know them. So we know him. I, I, don't, I don't know what's in his heart, and I don't care. The Center for American Progress calls you an Islamophobia grassroots organizer. Yeah. And American Center for Progress is a le uber left-wing, Soros-funded, subversive organization. I mean, these are not legitimate organizations. If you're a rational, thinking person that loves individual rights, that believes in individual rights over statism, that believes in individual rights over collectivism, I'm sorry, but these are not legitimate organizations. Who are you going to vote for? Oh, really? I'm voting for President Romney. So here we go. Geller endorses Romney. That's the, there's, your, there's your headline. Thank you very much, Pamela. Appreciate it. Thank you, Evan, for having me. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.